Der Marxismus bedeutet die Verewigung der Zerreißung der Nation, damit aber die Schwächung des gesamten Volkes, damit die Verelendung dieses Volkes und damit den Verrat gerade an der Klasse, die er als tragend unter sich wissen will, und die er einer besseren Zukunft entgegenzuheben verspricht. Der Verrat an der Arbeiterschaft ist die zwangsläufige Folge dieser Zerreißung des Volkskörpers. Und dem muss der Folgen der Verrat selbstverständlich an deutschen Bauern, der Verrat selbstverständlich an diesen Millionen Massen genauso armer, Menschen des Mittelstandes und des Handwerks. Labor unions were dissolved. Strikes were outlawed. Union contracts were nullified. Prominent union leaders and other labor activists were imprisoned or murdered. Union property was confiscated. Worker publications were banned. Opposition political parties were outlawed. Their leaders jailed. Civil liberties were suspended. Fascist-sponsored unions, quote, unions were set up, and their function was to speed up production, prevent wildcat strikes, and apply punitive regulations, including fines, dismissals, and imprisonments against workers who agitated or complained of shop conditions. These are people who work hard, but no longer have a voice. I am your voice. I have seen firsthand how the system is rigged against our citizens just like it was rigged against Bernie Sanders. He never had a chance. But his supporters will join our movement because we will fix his biggest single issue, trade deals that strip our country of its jobs and strip us of our wealth as a country. Adolf Hitler learns how to effectively exploit his camaraderie with fellow war veterans, as he does 15 years later in this speech to workers at the Siemens factory. Postgenossen, Hauptgenossinnen, meine deutschen Arbeiter, ich bin aus euch selbst herausgewachsen, bin eins selbst unter euch gestanden, 
den in viereinhalb Jahren Krieg wieder mitten unter euch gewesen und habe mich dann durch Fleiß, durch Lernen und ich kann sagen durch Hungern langsam emporgearbeitet. Der Verlanke's Leadership was predominantly middle class or aristocratic young men. But the movement was designed to appeal to working class sentiments, albeit staunchly anti-Marxist. Raimundo Fernandez Cuesta later became Secretary General of the Falange. We discussed whether we should wear any distinctive clothing. Jose Antonio said, we should wear a blue shirt. It's the same color as the proletariat's overalls. And it was the same for the flag. It was black and red, because that was the flag of the anarchist trade unions. We wanted ours to be similar. The same with the word comrade, traditionally used by the communists. Jose Antonio said, I don't see why we shouldn't claim it ourselves. Give the word comrade a different meaning. Millions of Democrats will join our movement because we are going to fix the system so it works fairly and justly for each and every American. We've made terrible trade deals. What we've done even worse than trade in the pure sense is our companies are leaving. We will bring our jobs back, Sean. We're going to bring our jobs, as sure as you're sitting there, we are going to bring our jobs back into this country. But I believe it's very important that you have free trade. Japan comes over to this country, they're buying up Wall Street, they're buying up all of Manhattan's real estate, which is fine as far as I'm concerned because they're paying premium prices that put people like myself in a very good position. She has it completely backwards. Hillary Clinton unleashed a trade war against the American worker when she supported one terrible deal after another. From NAFTA to China to South Korea, it doesn't matter. No matter where she went, the American worker was hurt. And I'd also like to know uh, if Mr. Trump would support a Canadian-U.S. free trade agreement. I support anything having to do with Canada because I think they've been one hell of a good ally. Number one selling I, I tie know, anywhere in the world. That that's, shirt, you wouldn't wear that we shirt? We also have them in white and beautiful where, white. Where are the shirts made? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Well, it's good. We employ people in Bangladesh. That's ties? Where are the ties they made? Have to work These are too. beautiful ties. They are great ties. The ties are made in where? China? China. Ties are made in China. <laughs> we cannot have free trade without fair trade. We must protect American jobs and businesses. I was the first major candidate in modern times to promote the term and policy of America first. And you're right, my policy is America first. It's time that we take an America first policy in the world. America first! My slogan remains America first. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo. We must stop the massive immigration. We must immediately suspend immigration. With the immigration, they have encountered waves of crime, drugs. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. We don't want them in our country. It's time to end all political pact money and the control of politics by the oligarchs of finance and media. Big business, elite media, and major donors are lining up behind the campaign of my opponent. Would you support a Democrat over David Duke? if it was what was necessary to defeat him. I guess depending on who the Democrat... But I'm overjoyed to see Donald Trump embrace most of the issues that I've championed for years. The GOP nominee hammering home nationalist themes, presenting the country as a dark place. The billionaire striking a populist tone, too. I have joined the political arena so that the powerful can no longer beat up on people who cannot defend themselves. Nobody knows the system better than me. Which is why I alone can fix it. Um, who are you talking to consistently since we have some dire foreign policy issues uh, percolating around the world right now? I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have a very good brain and I've said a lot of things. In his election speeches, Hitler made no secret of the fact that a vote for the Nazis was a vote for dictatorship.
Der Kampf gegen den Marxismus wurde damals zum ersten Mal zu einem Kampfziel erhoben. Damals gelobte ich mir zum ersten Mal als unbekannter Eiserer diesen Krieg zu beginnen und mich zu ruhen, bis endlich diese Erscheinung aus dem deutschen Leben beseitigt sein würde. Well, of course, the communist, the one thing we have to understand at the outset is that the Communist Party is not a political party. It's a criminal conspiracy. Its object is, as has been established by the verdict of a jury, the overthrow of the government of the United States by force and violence as soon as the right time arrives. I knew Roy Cohn. I knew him very well. And you just cannot understand how Donald could have been this close. I write in the book that they talked 15 times a day. One of the two stories here, I can't remember which one said it was five times a day. I, it's probably somewhere in between. This communist. One communist on the faculty of one university is one communist too many. One communist among the Admir American advisors at Yalta was one communist too many. And even even if there were only one communist in the State Department, even if there were only one communist in the State Department, that would still be one communist too many. Singer Paul Robeson was open about his communist sympathies. The slogans of the demonstrators, um, it went, uh, go back to Russia, you white niggers, for instance, over and over. Commies, niggers, Jews. You got in, but you're not going to get out alive. Hitler didn't finish the job. We will. There's no question that next to Fred Trump, Roy Cohn was the single greatest influence in Donald's life. And Roy is incandescent evil. He was a chicken hawk after little boys, and yet he was the most virulently anti-gay guy you could imagine. And uh, so that was Donald's mentor and constant sidekick who represented all five of the organized crime families in the city of New York. By public statements of the Communist Party, which are then the constant references to the Constitution and civil liberties, which are used by this organization, which wants to destroy civil liberties as a cover-up for the day when it can, by violent revolution, destroy our democratic government and institute the worst type dictatorship this world has ever known. I never thought we'd see the day in our country when a communist, because that's really, you think about it, when a communist is the leading Democrat, we're going to have a communist against an entrepreneur. I like the entrepreneur, right? This socialist slash communist, okay? Nobody wants to say it. You're paying attention to the presidential elections this time. Oh, yes. In your own personal opinion, who's best for the job? I think Donald Trump would be best for the job. For president? Yeah. The reason a lot of Klan members like Donald Trump is because a lot of what he believes, we believe in. What do you know of Fred Trump's involvement with the Ku Klux Klan? I can't understand how Donald Trump denies that this is true. These are, I think, Washington Post clips, you know, which clearly say he was involved with the Ku Klux Klan. What I did write about in the book and what I actually wrote about at The Voice in the 70s was the race discrimination case that Richard Nixon's Justice Department brought against Fred and Donald Trump for racially excluding blacks and Latinos in a systematic way with a color-coded system where if a black came in seeking a, an apartment, they got a certain color of folder, where if a Latino came in, they got a different color fo uh, folder of where the application was put. The easiest way to exclude people and the, you know, the federal government established that during the course of protracted hearings and ultimately Fred and Donald settled the case. Donald Trump is facing new allegations of racism after a former employee of his claims that he was forced to leave the hotel that he was working at because he was black when Donald Trump and his wife would visit. Brown also used to work in the casinos, at the showboat, bussing tables, and at Trump's castle, stripping and waxing floors.
When Donald and Ivana came to the casino, the bosses would order all the black people off the floor. It was in the 80s. I was a teenager, but I remember it. And he also says they put us all in the back. I want to Obama give you a test does on not him. like the issue of where he was born. He was born in Kenya and he lived in Indonesia. You and I have known I each other for a long time. time. And I don't understand why you're doubling down on this birther issue after the state of Hawaii formally says this is the legitimate birth certificate. He was born in Hawaii. Why are you going through all of this? There were two announcements the week he was uh, born in both Honolulu newspapers saying that he was born. Okay? That is impossible. That is impossible to make happen if he had not been born in the hospital. There couldn't have been a sophisticated, what is he, baby Jesus? There was a sophisticated conspiracy to smuggle this baby back into the country. A man and a woman with no money to have a baby, there's announcements in the newspaper. The grandparents Excuse me, did. The grandparents Nelson Rockefeller doesn't put announcements. Sure, there are Who, birth announcements all the time. I've, I've never seen one. Uh, it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. President Obama's father was born in Kenya. My father was born in Poland. But nobody has asked me for my birth certificate. Maybe it has something to do with the color of my skin. I don't know. ISIS is honoring President Obama. He is the founder of ISIS. He's the founder of ISIS, okay? He's the founder. He founded ISIS. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay. Trump's campaign is facing criticism after it named a prominent white supremacist leader to its list of delegates in California. William Johnson is the head of the American Freedom Party, which aims to preserve, quote, the customs and heritage of the European American people, unquote. Over the years, he's advocated for the creation of a white state and the deportation of almost all non-white citizens from the United States. Johnson's name appeared on a list of delegates published by California's Secretary of State Monday. After Mother Jones broke the story on Tuesday, the Trump campaign blamed Johnson's selection on a, quote, database error and removed him. But correspondence published by Mother Jones shows the Trump campaign was in touch with Johnson as recently as Monday. The Southern Poverty Law Center has described Johnson's American Freedom Party as arguably the most important white nationalist group in the country. Okay, who's uh, next? Yeah, please. Excuse me, sit down. You weren't called. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Go ahead. No, you don't. You haven't been called. Go back to Univision. You're very rude. It's not about you. It's not about Get out of my country. Get out. This is not my, about I'm you. A, I'm a U.S. citizen, too. Well, whatever. No, Univision, no. I have a judge who is a hater of Donald Trump. A hater. He's a hater. His name is Gonzalo Curiel, the judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican. The judge is not Mexican. The judge was born in the state of Indiana. These things used to be at least a little ambiguous. Not anymore. Why antagonize the judge this in that is case? Because I don't care. And, and because talk you about know the what? Why antagonize? The judge. Because I don't care. If you follow the campaign closely, or if you spend a lot of time on Twitter or Reddit, there's a good chance you've encountered alt-right trolls smearing minority groups or sharing sexist memes. Many of them read or write for Breitbart News, whose erstwhile chairman, Steve Bannon, is now in charge of the Trump campaign as its CEO. We are the platform for the alt-right, Bannon proudly told Mother Jones of Breitbart last month. Alt-right Twitter has also targeted Jewish journalists for harassment, especially those covering the Trump campaign. After writing a profile, Melania Trump for GQ, which Trump later claimed contained numerous inaccuracies, reporter Yuzhulia Yaffe was inundated with threatening anti-Semitic messages, many of them invoking the Holocaust, ultimately prompting her to file a police report. By bringing on Stephen Bannon, Trump was signaling a wholehearted embrace of the alt-right, a once motley assemblage of anti-immigrant, anti-Muslim, ethno-nationalistic provocateurs who have coalesced behind Trump and curried the GOP nominee's favor on social media, unquote. 
Breitbart regularly sparks controversy with headlines such as Bill Crystal, Republican spoiler, renegade Jew. Even former Breitbart employees have spoken out. The site's former editor-in-chief, Ben Shapiro, recently wrote, quote, Breitbart's become the alt-right go-to website, pushing white ethno-nationalism as a legitimate response to political correctness and the comments section turning into a cesspool for white supremacist meme makers. It's our right as a sovereign nation to choose immigrants that we think are the likeliest to thrive and flourish and love us. Whether Donald Trump wanted to or not, his tough immigration speech triggered support among people who see immigration by minorities as a recipe for disaster. I know the speech last night was beautiful. I, it was really, really good, and I was really happy about it. The obvious difference was his skin color. I mean, Neo-Nazi Andrew Anglin was thrilled as he appeared on the radio show of former Klansman David Duke, who was pretty happy too. We've got to take America back, and we have to defend the heritage of the people who've created America. In other words, white people. One goal excited special praise. To keep immigration levels measured by population share within historical norms. Some of these groups clearly believe that would mean a preference for white Christian immigrants. White nationalist writer Richard Spencer cited long ago legislation severely limiting immigrants from Eastern and Southern Europe, Africa, Arabs and Asians. Trump is returning to the ideas of the 1924 Immigration Act. Immigrants will reflect the racial makeup of the country. And white nationalist publisher Jared Taylor called the speech almost perfect. Donald Trump has tied our foolish immigration policies to every problem we have. 74-year-old Anthony Senecal, the man previously known to the world as the former butler and affable house historian of Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, who says he's worked with Trump for nearly 30 years, also kept a Facebook page filled with hateful and threatening statements about President Obama. I think he ought to be hung. I think he should be hung. I think he should be hung next to, uh, to Hillary Clinton. And I think it should be public. I think it should be televised. I think it ought to be done from the portico of the, of the, of the White Mosque. It used to be the White House. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish, the Second Amendment. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Senecal then went on to say that we should bomb cities like Detroit and Milwaukee, which have been, quote, totally disgraced by Muslims. I actually think that we should designate those as nuclear bomb sites. What do you mean? We need to bomb them out. Even though they're in the U.S.? I could care less if they're in the U.S. I don't want them in the U.S. Right. They don't belong here. They belong in the sand dunes where they came from. Several months ago, uh, a foreign policy expert on the international level went to advise Donald Trump, and three times he asked about the use of nuclear weapons. Mm. Three times he asked, at one point, if we have them, why can't we use them? Trump asked three times. Three times in an weapons. hour briefing, why can't we use nuclear weapons? They're hearing a guy running for president of the United States talking about maybe using nuclear weapons. Nobody wants to hear that well, about then, an American then president. Then why are we making them? Why do we make them? You have to wipe out their arms where they came from. You have to absolutely wipe them out. Why use it in Europe? I, no, I don't think so. But well, I'm not just taking, saying it. I've never used a nuclear weapon not, in Europe. I am not taking cards off the table. I'm not going to use nukes, okay. but I'm not taking okay. any cards the off the table. The trouble is the same people hear you, and the insane people are not affected by your threats. We need to bomb them out. You have to wipe out their arms where they came from. You have to absolutely wipe them out. Even though they're in the U.S.? I could care less if they're in the U.S. I don't want them in the U.S. They don't belong here. They belong in the sand dunes where they came from. I'd blow up every single inch. There would be nothing left. The tactic of the Democratic Party in the last 25 years, they know that ever since they became the party of sort of corporatism and Wall Street, they don't inspire anybody. So their tactic is to say the Republican Party is the epitome of evil. Even when they have conventional nominees like Mitt Romney or John McCain, they demonize them and say they're, they're this unparalleled threat to democracy. In this election, just by coincidence, it happens to be true. Let's give the power back to the people.
people. We can't trust them. Bottom line is 2015. We can't trust who? The Muslims coming in. We don't know who so they you're are. You're picking out a specific religion. Yes, I am, because we can't trust yeah. them. So when I walk up and I'm like, hi, I'm a fascist, they're like, oh, like Donald Trump. I'm like, not exactly, but close. If he could shut down illegal immigration or reverse the trends temporarily, the way I see it is this. If you're on the table and you're bleeding out and your arteries bleeding out, the doctor has to go ahead and put a tourniquet on so you don't bleed to death before then he can fix the wounded stuff and bleed. Donald Trump is a tourniquet to be able to slow things down demographically, to give real nationalists enough time to be able to build our movement, to build our infrastructure, our manpower, our street presence, to be able to fix the problem. So the yelling uh, that you're Nazis and shit like that, how does that make you feel? It doesn't bother me. And the memory that comes to my mind, again, I don't want to press the analogy too hard, but I, I think it's worth thinking about, is late Weimar Germany. Uh, there were people with real grievances. Uh, the Nazis gave them an answer. It's the fault of the Jews and the Bolsheviks, and we've got to protect ourselves from them. Uh, uh, and that'll take care of your grievances. And we know what happened. Uh, Germany in the 1920s was you know, the most civilized, the peak of Western civilization in the, in the arts and the sciences, uh, uh, highly democratic, functioning democratic institutions. A decade later, it was in you know, the pits of human history. And unless an answer can be given to these people, unless they can be uh, led to understand what's really happening to them, we could be in for trouble. The antidote to Trump is a very strong progressive agenda that says, yes, I know that you're angry. And you know what? You should be angry. You should work in longer hours for low wages. You have a right to be bitter and you have a right to be. Don't take it out on the Muslims. Don't take it out on Latinos. Try to help us work together to create a country where your kids and you can have a decent standard of living. And it has to be a bold and radical agenda. No more same old, same old. I don't mean to be political here. People are hurting and they're angry and they want something to be able to stand up and fight for.